Hello and welcome to the Central Television. I am Likon on Mabanjo. The top stories at this hour. Nigerian authority to probe naval chief over allegations of corruption. Mali to organize a national peace dialogue to curtail a rise in separatist attacks. Ganda disowns dissenting judges' claim in Israel genocide court ruling. Details to come your way shortly. The news begins in West Africa, where the federal government of Nigeria has ordered an investigation into allegations of corruption against the chief of naval staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala. Ogala is accused of providing security for oil thieves and receiving huge sums in return against the federal government's started war against oil thieves. A statement by the Director of Press and the Ministry of Information, Hensho Ogubike, the Minister of State for Defense, Mohamed Belo Matawali, called for a thorough and impartial investigation to ascertain the truth of the claims. He said the administration of President Bolat Numbu has zero tolerance for corruption in the public service. The minister assured that the Ministry of Defense would collaborate fully with relevant authorities to conduct a comprehensive investigation into the matter. To security matters now, six pupils of the Sangaya Quranic Center in Gubio town have been killed by an improvised explosive device which exploded near the Sangaya in the Gubio local government area of Borneo State. The incident occurred when a metal scavenger unknowingly collected and stored various metallic items in a building near the Sangaya school. It was reported that the scavenger collected the IED, which was abandoned among other scrap metals undetonated and it exploded at approximately 2 p.m., claiming the lives of the Almajirai children, causing severe bodily harm to others. Metal scavenging had been prohibited in Borneo State by Governor Babagana Zulum since July 2023, following reports of alleged vandalism of government facilities in abandoned communities. In the meantime, Nigeria's Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Hassan Abubakar, has met with families and victims of the accidental airstrikes that occurred on January 24, 2023, near Rukubi in Doma local government area of Nasarawa State. The Director of Public Relations and Information, Nigerian Air Force, Edward Gabwet, disclosed this on Sunday in Abuja. The CAS expressed regret over the incident, saying the incident's reports show that in innocent civilians might have erroneously been killed or injured in the process. He said that the unfortunate incident was not deliberate, but was targeting suspected terrorists and cattle rustlers in view of the heightened level of insecurity in the area at the time. Meanwhile, Nigeria's Chief of Army Staff, Tarid Ladbaja, has condemned in strong terms the violent attacks in some communities in Mangu local government area of Plateau State, the army chief was speaking when he led some senior officers of the Nigeria army to Mangu for an on-the-spot assessment of the unrest which occurred in the area. New Central's Chizoba Anyongwe was there and now completes the reports. The recent attacks in Mangu, which took many lives and left many others injured, also left scores of houses worship centers, business places, and other properties burned. Having assessed the level of damage, the Army Chief commended the General Officer Commanding, 3 Division and Commander Operation Safe Haven, Major General Abdul Salam Abubakar, for his swift response. He had words for the troops on more efficient service delivery. To manage any crisis or conflict situation, it has to be a delicate balance of three major actors of the government, the people, and the military. The military is meant to create an enabling environment for other elements of national power to come into play, be it political in terms of dialogue, be it developmental in terms of provision of jobs, construction of roads, and what have you. The military has been on the plateau for some time, 
And so we need the appearance of other elements of national power to bring a lasting and sustainable peace to plateau. We have said this, we are discussing with other critical stakeholders to ensure that that is done. We cannot rule out flashes, occurrence of conflict, but the response of the military is what matters. What happened in Mangu on 23rd, 24th of January was contained quickly and localized in this community. So I want to commend the troops for that. Just about six months ago, General Labaja was in Mangu to commission this step-up command of Operation Safe Heaven. He was again here on the plateau on the eve of New Year with other service chiefs when violent attacks broke out in Bokos, Barkin Ladi, and same Mangu local government areas. He reiterated the Nigerian army's resolve to end the bloodbath in the state, despite rumors of complicity by the troops. The composition of the troops is such that it's a mixture of the entire Nigerian society. We don't look at faces when we are deploying our troops. We don't ask of their religion. We don't ask of where they come from. So if you ask people here, some of them are from this community, but they've joined the army. Do you expect somebody that is from this community to aid militias that have come to invade this community? I doubt if that is reasonable. So those allegations are unfounded. They are rumor as far as I'm concerned. We have investigated, but we will leave our channels open so that in the event that lawful citizens, law-abiding citizens have complaints about the conduct of our troops, they can channel them to us and we will investigate and take appropriate actions. With the deployment of more troops and combat enablers, the chief of the army staff is confident that maximum peace will be restored in the state sooner than later. In Mangu for New Central, I am Chizoba Anyoui. To further discuss this, I'm joined by President Birom Youth Moldas in Plateau State, Solomon Daliop. Solomon, thank you so much for joining us on the news. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here once again. Well, you just listened to Nigeria's um, Chief of Army Staff, Atarid Lagbaja, saying that security personnel are on ground. They're monitoring the situation and then trying to ensure that there is peace and all those um, elements uh, causing a uh, havoc in Plateau State, most especially Mango, are uh, apprehended. Do you feel safe? Um, do you believe, are you confident in what the um, Chief of Army Staff has said? Uh, of course, uh, the, the Chief of Army Staff, the Chief of Defense Staff, and also the Commander Operation Safe Heaven are people of integrity. We believe in what they've said because they are vested with the power to man the security situation, not only in Plateau State, but in Nigeria as a whole. And of course, uh, we also have to commend the new approach that uh, is being adopted now that of course upon every distress call, security will rapidly respond, just as what happened yesterday. We saw the rapid response of the security, and that's why we've not heard of any uh, uproar uh, that the security are biased again. Of course, uh, you know, it's one thing for a directive to be given, as we always say, and it's another thing for the directive to be adhered to. So these are two different elements. However, uh, what we are witnessing from yesterday to today, there is cooperation, there is synergy, and of course there is the, the chief of army staff, the, the chief of defense staff, and as well as the uh, commander operation safe heaven on the plateau, Major General A.E. Abubakar. Mm. Uh, okay, well, uh, just to go back to the, what you said earlier about um, some speculations that uh, probably um, some soldiers uh, are not actually doing or compromising on directives given unto them. Uh, a few days ago, despite the presence of military personnel, uh, tension was said to have still remained on a high in Mangu and its surroundings. Uh, why were there still killings uh, despite the provision of this military personnel in this area and the curfew that was put in place by the governor? Or would you say that now, compared to a few days ago, things have changed? Of course, there's improvement now as of today, yesterday and today. 
uh, this improvement, even though uh, there were some uh, uh, areas that were attacked yesterday or an attempted attack were to be carried out in some areas, but thank God for the, um, the vigilance that people have staged and also the rapid response of the security who have also who have always been responding as at day before yesterday, yesterday and also today. Of course, they were able to repel the attackers, and so so there is actual improvement. But as to why there are still killings, of course, the bad elements have not been have not yet been flushed out from the state from their hideouts, and and so we should be we should you know expect uh, uh, these uh, you know elements that are after uh, raining havoc on uh, native inhabitants and uh, peace loving people of Plato State and also residents that they will not hold their hands until when either they are flushed out completely or they overrun the whole location and then it becomes their own, you know, which uh, invariably will amount to their territorial expansion of land grabbing that we've been crying aloud on the plateau. I'm so looking at the root cause. That they would... Okay. Oh, all right, yeah, now, so, Solomon, Solomon, so, let's so, just look at, let's look at it this way. Looking at the root cause of the escalating violence in Plateau State. Uh, the Plateau State governor, that is Caleb Mutfuang, said the violence in the state is as a result of drug abuse. Uh, do you agree? Well, uh, uh, that could be one of the, one of the factors. Uh, but uh, in my own opinion, and going by what we have experienced over time, uh, the, the, the principal factor behind all these uh, attacks and killings is uh, thief, you know, extinct from their own uh, ancestral home state so that it would become, you know, an enclave of uh, terrorist elements and their cohorts that are both local and international who have always been, you know, recruited and brought into the state to carry out this mayhem. Aside the um, uh, uh, intake of illicit substance and hard drugs, which, you know, uh, uh, the bandits and also some of the criminal elements, not necessarily on the, uh, on the aspect of uh, carrying out armed invasions that will now bring in the, the issue of uh, uh, intake of hard drugs. But of course, even people that are into prostitution and other, you know, uh, reprehensible conduct, are also involved in the intake of this, but of course, for the for the for for uh, 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 for the avoidance of that, and then to have the record straight, based on what is happening in the state, uh, uh, um, the principal factors behind it is to have the people extinct, and then to have their lands, you know, grab for territorial expansionist uh, agenda of the Fulani uh, militants and their cohorts. That is, in my own view. Okay. Now, the chief of army staff uh, charged his personnel and soldiers deployed to restore peace in the Mangu local government area uh, to end the killings. Is it a daunting task for the military personnel assigned to flush out these criminal re uh, wreaking havoc in Plateau State? Because a number of people have complained about the number of these bandits or these criminals. They've talked about the obscure terrain, uh, the uneven terrain, and the routes that are said to be obscure, and the fact that um, some of these bandits carry superior weapons than what the Nigerian military um, do have. So when we look at all these um, issues, is it going to be a major challenge for the Nigerian army to decimate and deal with these uh, criminal elements? Well, we, we cannot deny the fact of the terrain uh, uh, you know, the road network, poor road, road network, and other associated factors that are actually impeding the smooth operation of the security personnel within this area. But of course, it is also a non fact that, you know, uh, security personnel have been trained either in good or bad weather, whether, whether, whether the road network or the you know, uh, they have the requisite power and all the gadgets, I want to believe, to contain, you know, the, the bad elements. Uh, where, where there is, uh, you, you know, um, uh, uh, challenged by the foot soldiers 
or by the ground soldiers, there should be an aerial support which will be, you know, you know, provided, which will, you know, on the plateau, we wouldn't want to say that the bad elements have such kind of, uh, 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 you know, arrangement, you know, in order to, uh, uh, you know, invade villages and communities. So it will be good that there should be, uh, you know, uh, aerial support to the for, for the for the for the for the for the troops on ground whenever there is a distress call, and then of course, uh, flushing out these bad elements. Uh, is something that the military has the capacity. It's just that some among them who have been fingered or who have been accused of compromising, you know, or compromise in the course of the operation, that are not helping, you know, the government are not helping those in command, mm -hmm. uh, especially the chief of defense staff, chief of army staff, and also the uh, uh, you know commander operation safeable. Because if there will be sincerity of purpose by all the security personnel. This thing is something that can be dealt with in one or two days. Just as let uh, 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 the General uh, Abacha say, any, any upheaval that lasts for 24 hours, you know, there must be compromise in it. So mm. I want to believe for, for this, you know, situation in Plateau to have lasted for over 20 years, and the one in Mangu to be precise, Mangu Bokos and Barikiladi, to last, you know, over, over this period that it has been experienced, you know, it's, 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 it's very, very uncalled for. And that's why we are calling that, in an, you know, since there are, there, are, there are outcries as to the compromise of some of these security personnel, there should be an impartial panel, you know, constituted by either federal government, state government, even though state government may not have the requisite power to constitute a panel that will investigate federal agents. But of course, the federal government could, the National Assembly, the presidency, or, you know, the, the uh, 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 chief of defense staff, could constitute an impartial panel that will investigate, you know, the activities and then the operation of the military to actually ascertain as okay. to whether or not they've been compromised so that the bad elements among them will, you know, will be fished out. Mm. And then, of course, that doesn't mean that, you know, uh, 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 other, other, other operatives are, oh. not, are, not, are, are not doing oh. well. Okay. They are doing wonderfully well, particularly in this case. And having, 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 having reposed confidence in the... Uh, 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 you know, um, uh, Major General A.E. Ab A. E. Abubakar okay. for his rapid response and then for his uh, uh, role of neutrality and impartiality, you know, in carrying out this operation. Yeah, Solomon, we, as Solomon, we uh, understand. This, you know, confidence. Uh, Solomon, Dalio, we understand. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Moving on now, the operatives of the Niger Police Force have arrested one Bello Mohammed, 28 years of Zamfara State in Kaduna, the Divisional Police Officer, Tafa Division, acting on intelligence, raided one hotel in Tafa area, uh, Kaduna, where Bello was arrested with the sum of 2.25 million naira, according to a statement signed by the Police Public Relations Officer, Ulumu Iwa Dejobi, the money is suspected to be proceeds of ransoms collected from kidnapped victims within the area. The suspects, during interrogation, confessed to being part of the gang that kidnapped the family members of one barrister, Ario Mbari FCT, on January 2, 2024, and killed some kidnapped victims, including a Biha, do uh, daughter rather, of the legal practitioner on January 13, 2024, in a kidnapper's camp in Kaduna State. The suspects, in a dramatic situation, offered one million naira to induce the DPO, who rejected the offer and carried out his duty diligently. Still talking security, the Minister of Nigeria's federal capital has pledged to provide security agencies in the AMAC and Abaji area councils with adequate logistics to help tackle insecurity within the federal capital. This was as the minister visited both area councils to engage with residents as part of efforts to deep the escalating insecurity challenges in the federal capital headlong. Amadin Uyi tells us more. The dialogue commenced from the Apu district of Abuja with stakeholders from the Abuja Municipal Area Council. The minister urged residents of the council to take the issue of insecurity seriously saying its effects on citizens and development can be devastating. Insecurity does not know who is a Christian. Insecurity does not know who is a Muslim. Insecurity does not know where you come from. It can be me today. 
it can be you tomorrow. It can be the other person tomorrow. So it has nothing to do with you are from here, you are not from here. Stakeholders of the area council presented a list of measures needed to be put in place to help some of the satellite communities tackle insecurity affecting them. It will interest you, sir, to know that if communities such as Kabusa, Keti, Bao, and other communities that have become kidnappers hideout are accessible by security agencies, the rate of crime would have been adequately addressed. On this note, sir, we are pleading and we are appealing to you, sir, for your quick intervention to create access role to the following communities. One, Kabusa Keti Access Road. Two, Takushara Burum Access Road. Three, Karishi to Gidankwanu, Leka and Kutasa. From there, the ministerial team then proceeded to the Abaji Area Council to meet with stakeholders over the worrisome state of insecurity in the council. The chairman of the council appealed for more military and police presence in the area, which shares borders with neighboring Kogi state. There is a demand for a military checkpoint in Yabatan as being obtained in the Harajita. An upgrade of police outposts in town to a full divisional office with additional manpower, additional vehicle and logistics for the security agency to discharge their duty responsibility. The minister pledged his commitment to providing security agencies with adequate logistics. We are not going to enough to leave anything. Our security agencies who are working will be given all the necessary support in terms of logistics and all the equipment. You're watching News Now. We have more stories to come your way in a bit, and that's going to be after this short timeout. Enforcement Agency has declared an ex-beauty queen, Queen Uluwa Damilola Adirmioye, wanted for dealing in illicit drug activities. According to a statement released by Femi Baba Femi, Director of Media and Advocacy at the NDLEA National Headquarters in Abuja, the suspect, who held the title of Mrs. Commonwealth Nigeria Culture 2015-2016 and founder of the Queen Christmas Foundation, was declared wanted. The declaration came after she fled her Lekki estate to evade operatives who had received intelligence suggesting her involvement in illicit substance dealings. Now to election matters. No fewer than 4.6 million permanent voter cards have been collected by voters for the February 3 rerun by elections in Nigeria. About 2.19 billion PVCs were collected by voters for the by elections while 2.4 million PVCs were collected for the rerun elections. According to the Commission, 74 domestic observers and one international observer will observe the February 3 elections. By elections will be conducted in two senatorial districts, that is, Ebony South in Ebony State and Yobe East in Yobe State. Three state constituencies, including Chibok State Constituency, Borunu State, Chikun State Constituency, Kaduna State and Guwa State Constituency, Benue State. Similarly, elections will be conducted in four federal constituencies, namely Akoko Northeast, Akoko Northwest Federal Constituency, Ondo State, Jalingo Yoro Zeng Federal, federal Constituency, Taraba State, Surulere One Federal Constituency, Lagos State, and Yaori Shanga Ngaski Federal Constituency in Kebi State. public media organizations in the country that it will help boost revenues to make the sector more profitable. Nigeria's Minister of Information and National Orientation made this known while receiving a report on the nation's audience measurement system. 
expected to provide valuable insights into the viewing habits of citizens, thus helping advertisers make data-driven decisions. Amadin Uyi reports. Nigeria, in Africa, being trailed by South Africa and Kenya. While the market has witnessed tremendous growth in the last few years, experts say it earns less than its counterpart in both countries. Despite our size, um, we're doing uh, about $360 million in the entire Nigerian media market. And South Africa, you know, with the population that is about one third of ours, we're doing about four times of that. Uh, our broadcast and advertising market is underperforming despite our huge population. And that indeed is also having a huge impact on the GDP, the contribution that the media industry is also having overall on our economy. Big as Nigeria is, our revenue profile is so negligible that even Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, are doing three times, four times more. And we have more radio and TV and newspaper houses than all of these countries. The media houses, if I can tell you for free, it's the only channel that I think is making it. All others are still struggling. It shouldn't be. We have the biggest creative sector in Nigeria. And the economy grew from 2013 on an average of 5 to 6% based on the creative sector, which was not measured before. But while the creative sector is growing, the media, which it needs to grow upon, becomes it's becoming day by year in year out very weak particularly the television audience and because there's no enough investment going in there nigeria's government in 2020 set up a tax team to come up with an audience measurement system that will help boost revenues within the media sector and provide adequate data to help advertisers make data-driven decisions the tax team recently submitted its report to government the audience measurement system holds immense importance in ensuring that our broadcasting endeavors are not only impactful, but also reflective of the diverse preferences and needs of our audience. It is a tool that empowers us to understand and respond to the dynamic nature of our media consumers, providing valuable insights into their viewing habits, content preferences, and engagement patterns. Mm -hmm. The Minister of Information, while receiving the report in the nation's capital, Abuja, says that it will catalyze economic activities in Nigeria's media space. By leveraging the data on audience behavior, preferences, and engagement patterns, we aim to facilitate a more conducive environment for economic activities within the media sector. This initiative, therefore, aligns with the present administration's commitment promotion in the promotion of innovation, job creation, sustainable economic development, etc. He adds that the measurement system will help understand and respond to the diverse preferences of the Nigerian audience, providing valuable insights into the viewing habits of citizens. In Abuja for News Central, I am Amadin Uyi. We now pause with the news to bring you this breaking news. The military rulers of Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso are withdrawing their countries from ECOWAS with immediate effect, a joint statement has revealed. And definitely will bring you details of this particular latest development in our subsequent bulletins. Let's now tell you that the body of late Sylvester Oromoni Jr., who reportedly died on November 30, 2021, at a private hospital in Wari Delta State after alleged health complications at Darwin College, Lagos, has finally been buried at Obejo Delta State, South South Nigeria. New Central's correspondent, Austin Azu, who covered the funeral rites, reports that the father of the late 12-year-old boy vowed to get justice for his dead son. 
a.m. on Saturday, sympathizers and guests have converged on the residence of Sylvester Romani Sr. in Worry, Delta State, to accompany him to O'Brien's Hospital, where the body of his late son Sylvester Romani Jr. being kept for two years. The remains of late Sylvester Romani Jr. was, however, conveyed in a motorcade, moved through some major roads before arriving the Worry Club jetty for outward movements to his hometown, Obujo. At the funeral service, the priest described late Sylvester Romani Jr. as having a philanthropic spirit in that in him, helped influence the payment of school fees for his schoolmates and house rent for teachers. Prominent Nigeria lawyer and human rights activist Femi Falana, SAN, who elogized late Oromoni Jr., urged parents not just to see the death of their children as God's ways often, but to always investigate the cause of their death, irrespective of the circumstances. Uh, very soon, I mean, between now and April, the corona that conducted the inquest will come out with his findings, and we're very sure that justice will be done. Father of the deceased, Oromoni Sinion, was optimistic of getting justice despite the two years of investigating the circumstances that led to his son's death. Oh, I want Nigerians to know that this boy did not die natural death. They brutalized him, they poisoned him. So it's not a natural death. That's what I want Nigerians to know. When he died that on the 30th of November 2021, I saw the body and I promised him. I'm going to find justice for him for 30 years. If God keeps me alive. Two years and two months gone. The reason I decided to bury him now is because I've gotten the record of proceedings from the courts. I know that I can proceed from there. No matter the decision of this corona inquest, I will still proceed from there. I've gotten the record of proceedings. That's prompted me to bury him now. Late Sylvester Oremoni Jr., popularly known as Daddy, was born on the 4th of December 2009 and passed on 30th of November 2021 after alleged health complications at Darwin College, Lagos. In worry for News Central, I'm Austin Azu. As one of the most populous countries in Africa, Nigeria's consumption capacity holds great potential for the recycling industry. A Nigerian company is giving old tires a second life, turning waste into bricks, floor tiles, and even flip flops. Here's the report. By the Tire Industry Project, 1 billion end of life tires are generated globally every year, and an estimated 4 billion are currently in landfills and stockpiles worldwide. However, in Nigeria, one company is helping to reduce waste through recycling. Free Recycle is transforming old tires into paving bricks, floor tiles, flip-flops and other goods and since its launch in 2018, the company have recycled over 400,000 tires into new products. We've been doing our best to educate the general public on the need to embrace recycling. You know, there's, there's wealth in waste. Most people don't know that, but I'm happy that quite a number of people have Started identifying opportunities in, in, in recycling. Uh, if the depends on the trust of the company, if the the product is okay, there's no problem, problem about that. For bungalows, I don't think there is much risk in it. For bungalows, basically, you can play around with bungalows. Eh? But if you are raising the load beyond bungalow level, it may not be advisable. We need to welcome new innovation. So I will consider it, but with a proof, probably about one of two people that have used um, that bricks from that same company that is introducing it from a, from a, a tire, you know, uh, production. And then mixed with an adhesive that lets workers shape the waste into all manner of products, which is believed to have prevented more than 8,100 tons of CO2 emissions since it began. We are not only reducing the amount of tires that are being burnt in, in, in dump sites and landfills, and we all know that when you burn those tires, toxic fumes are released into the environment, which can then result in um, chronic health issues. We're also clearing out drainages, you know, with, that, with tires and other 
solid waste in, in drainage. We usually see what happens. Flooding during the rainy season and then um, breeding ground for mosquitoes, which then causes malaria. The existence of diverse opportunities along the value chain indicates an untapped gold mine that not only contributes to economic growth, but also social prosperity and environmental protection. If correctly managed, efficient waste recycling can result in job creation, renewable energy generation, air and water quality improvement, among other things. In Lagos, for New Central, Bettina Mwili. Staying in West Africa, Mali's junta has set up a committee to organize a national peace dialogue after it scrapped a key 2015 peace deal with northern separatist groups following months of hostilities. Algeria was the main mediator in efforts to return peace to northern Mali following the agreement signed in its capital in 2015 between the Malian government and predominantly Tuareg armed groups. However, the military appointed head of government, Chogul Kokala Mega, in a video posted on social media on Friday, said there will be no negotiations outside Bamako as it will no longer go to a foreign country to speak about its problems. The Algerian broker deal had already begun to unravel last year when fighting between the separatists and Mali government troops broke out in August after eight years of calm. Coming up on the news, Uganda disowns dissenting judges' claim in Israel genocide court ruling. Details of this and other stories to come your way shortly. Do stay with us. Uganda has distanced itself from an opinion written by a Ugandan judge on the International Court of Justice dissenting from the panel's ruling in South Africa's genocide case against Israel and said the remarks do not reflect Uganda's position. Julia Sebatinde was the only judge on the 17-member ICJ panel to vote against all six measures adopted by the court in a ruling ordering Israel to take action to prevent acts of genocide as it fights Hamas terrorists in the Gaza Strip. She was also one of only two judges to oppose the court's assertion that some Israeli actions in the war against Hamas may violate the Genocide Convention. The other was Israeli Justice Haran Barak. It added that the East African country supported the position of the non-aligned movement on the conflict that was adopted at its summit in the Ugandan capital this month. And I'll tell you that South Sudan's National Bureau of Standards has deposed, disposed, uh, expired and substandard products seized from the different markets in Juba to ensure the protection of consumers. The Standard Authority conducted a successful inspection of Malakia, Kuyonkoyo, Custom Market, Gay Road, some hotels and supermarkets in December last year, but purposely to check on the validity of products, which led to the confiscation of several expired products, including beverages, food items, lubricants, engine oil, and others. Addressing journalists at a press conference, Corwell Kwai Corwell, the chairperson of SSNBS, said the team managed to remove over 5,000 expired, damaged, counterfeits, and substandard goods from different markets in Juba. Corwell said the goods were gutted off according to the SSNBS Act of 2012. In South Africa, inmates are to register for voting on January 30 to February 1, and the IEC has pleaded to the families of inmates to deliver identity documents to correctional centers. The IEC said it acknowledges that a number of offenders do not keep IDs in their possession. Family members are thus requested to make the necessary arrangements by delivering identification cards. The IEC also said Correctional centers will also be accepting IDs for inmates serving sentences in distant towns or provinces. These IDs will be transferred to the relevant facilities where inmates are incarcerated. Political analysts and polls have indicated that South Africa's ruling party, the ANC, which has been in power since 1994, will not get above 50%, which is needed to win the elections.
Israeli police and anti-government protesters have had a face-off outside the Ministry of Defense during a protest calling for an end to the war. The protesters believe Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is not the right leader to lead the war against Hamas as young soldiers continue to be killed every day as fighting intensifies. <laughs> In a related development, a couple of hundreds of demonstrators have held a vigil near the home of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in the coastal town of Caesarea as the Sabbath comes to a close, hoping it will hear the calls to do more to bring about the release of Israeli hostages in Gaza. The protesters believe that all must be done to ensure the hostages are brought back safe and alive, even if it means bringing the war to an end. We want him to do more to bring them home now. We can, they cannot wait because the, the, every day that is, uh, is, is um, every day someone is dying over there even though we don't know it yet. So we need to give, for my opinion, everything we can because there is no price for our loved, no price. We have to pay anything they want, even, even stop the war because uh, only a deal can bring them home. That's because Bibi Netanyahu doesn't meet us in, uh, at all. Only a few families uh, picking them uh, every time. Uh, he doesn't give us answers. Talking business now, Delta State has won the safest state award for oil and gas investments in the country at the Nigeria Oil and Gas Forum and Award Night. The award ceremony was organized by the founder, Ms. Nafisa Aliu Haruna, and sponsored by the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources, held at the International Conference Center in Abuja on Friday night. Presenting the award, Ms. Haruna stated that Delta State has contributed immensely to increased oil and gas production in Nigeria. She stated that Delta State emerged first from the opinion poll carried out within the industry as the safest in the oil and gas sector in Nigeria. Receiving the award, Delta State Governor Sheriff Oboriwari thanked the organizers for the well-deserved award, saying the state government remained irrevocably committed to ensuring peace and sustainable development of the state. In sports, head coach of the Super Eagles, Jose Pesero, has revealed that the Eagle... Angola, okay, is the name, it's not Angola. I didn't win one, one time the, 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 the AFCON. But he showed very good performance. He showed until now very good performance. For me, I don't know what the, the people in Nigeria think. For me, massive responsibility. If you want to beat... Uh, if you want to beat uh, Angola, must do our best, like today. We think he told me, Miss, I, resp I recover for next match. But sure, if he cannot, you go to play the goalkeeper. He, he played the 11. Uh, sure, he played the 11 players. I believe in all my players, but I want, I would like he, 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 I, I, which he recover. Matthew Pavon won the Farmers Insurance Open to become the first French player to win on the PGA Tour since Arnold Massey in 1907. The 31-year-old PGA Tour rookie was playing in his 11th Tour event and shot a three-under par round of 69 to win by one shot at Torrey Pine covered from a bogey 
at the first hole to pick up five birdies in the remainder of his round at the Torrey Pines South Course. Ulgegaard finished in second after a 70, while Germany's Stefan Jäger and American duo Nate Lashley and Jake Knapp tied for third place on and that's all at this hour, but before we go, let's take another look at some of our major stories. Nigerian authorities set to probe naval chief over allegations of corruption. Mali set to organize national peace dialogue to curtail a rise in separatist attacks. We also told you that Uganda has disowned dissenting judges' claim in Israel genocide court ruling. You can send your eyewitness report to the WhatsApp number on the screen. Do follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV. You can watch New Central live on DSTV channel 422, Star Times channel 274, Avo TV and YouTube. Many thanks for watching. I am Likon Onobanjo.